we're going to go ahead and get right into our next guest. Helping us to uh, to, to introduce our next guest, you know her from Collider Movie Talk, uh, Col- Perry Nemiroff. How's it going, Perry? Hello, hello. It's so good to see you, Chuck. Thanks for having me back. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for being here. I know you're dying, dying to talk to these next two guests. Perry, a little, bit. little, little side note uh, for the people who are about to uh, enter into the video. Perry was so excited to do this one. Of all the panels, she said, this is the one that I want to do. So I said, Perry, it's all yours. So I'm going to give it to you. Take it away. Have fun. So I'm not just saying this because I'm here and I'm about to talk about two of the stars on the show. Really, Ash vs. Evil Dead, when I look back on my career, is hands down one of the most, I don't know, just like influential, exciting, the show that I am most, one of the shows that I'm most appreciative to have covered so much. It was such a big deal to me. And part of the reason why that was the case is because the cast and crew behind the show was just such a delight to talk to time and time again. And of course, that group includes Dana DiLorenzo and Ray Santiago, who I can't wait to see right now. I can't wait to get into this conversation. Guys, how how are you doing? Let's please welcome Ray and Dana to the chat. Look at that setup. Hi, guys. Oh my God. Morning. I love you so much, Ray. Oh, wait. Am I froze? Can you hear me? Uh, we, we can't see you. We can't see you, Dana. Can you know? We we can't see you, but we can hear you. Oh, you're, well, you're well, you know I've right never right looked now. better. Never looked better. <laughs> Hold on. Let's wait. See, technology hates me. Uh, okay, I'll just say, you know what? I think this is the best way to do it. It's like I'm the evil force, and I'll just be the evil commenter. <laughs> Wait, uh, hold on. Let me, should I, like, re- okay, technical difficulties. What should we're, we do we're here? Get there. I just, hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to, like, redo all this and see what's, oh, wait. She oh, should no, le- um, what should I do? Ch- log off and log back in. Guys, I'll see you. You have a good interview, Ray. I'll see you in a second. We'll be here. We'll be here. Thank you, all Jack. right. All right. What's up, Ray? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Long time no speak. Uh, right now, like, what are you up to? How are you keeping busy? How are you staying positive? What are you What are you doing to fill the days? A lot of working out. Uh... <laughs> I, uh, I've been, I created a little like home studio here. So I've been, uh, just doing a lot of working out, a lot of, uh, running and reading and, uh, just like refocusing. Hi. 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 Oh my, I love this reunion right now. This is, um, Ray, this is so Ray. Happy. I haven't seen, hi Perry. I miss you. Hi. And Ray, I haven't seen you for like since New Zealand. Yeah. This is a big deal. I love this. Look at you with your poster. Look at that. <laughs> I'm very impressed by the lighting in Ray's room right now, too. I know. It's like there's gonna be that's a dance party. <laughs> oh yeah, you should have seen this is this 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 lighting's from my bedroom for sexy time, but I brought it in here because I thought maybe we should, you know, we should just uh, look we a little should, sexy. Look a little I sexy. Mean, <laughs> we should do it. We should do it. Oh my god, your mustache is gone. I'm just seeing that. Mustache is gone. Uh, oh, you know, no. my. <laughs> I, I almost swore. Perry, yeah. are you as blown away as I am? I, huh? I'm like, I was very surprised when I first saw him. I'm so used to that. And obviously I was what? re-watching some of the show last night too. So I was just all in that headspace. And now it's so I, different. Rock and I think, Yeah, I, Ray, I think I honestly just have like the Ray filter. I think I just, in my mind, drew it in your face. And then I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> You look great. Hi, guys. I feel like Hi. every uh, social media app out there does need a ray on Ash versus Evil Dead filter. Oh. So it automatically oh, gives you that sure. look. Oh, but only sure. if it gives you Dana's voice. Done. <laughs> 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 I wanted Done. to go back to the very beginning with you guys on this one. In particular, I want to know. Do you remember what you had to do to audition for these roles? Because Ash vs. Evil Dead is such a wild show, comedy-wise, blood-wise, uh, special effects-wise. So I can't quite wrap my brain around how they managed to condense what's required of you for these roles into an audition space. Um, you want to go, right? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, in the beginning, uh, I think it was just kind of... Um, 
weeding out the people that they that they really you know were interested in and then they just like put me in a room with Bruce and Sam and they kind of poked at me for a really long time they just like kind of like made me do weird things and you know I took my shirt off and they had me like do these okay. weird uh like like little stunts with Bruce and Sam like did this 360 shot with like his camera um but they just sort of talked to us and they were like, look, you're going to be tortured. Are you down? And, uh, and, and I was like, I'm down. I'm ready. Yeah. What about you, Dana? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, with mine, uh, I, for the very first audition, um, which is just, you know, for people who don't know, it's you and a casting director and a camera. Um, and the, uh, there was this, the two scenes that we that I had as uh, uh, for the audition actually were in the show. In the end, um, it was the scene in the in the very first scene with with Kelly in the um, value stop, and then there was a scene with with Pablo, whose name was what Paco or something at the time. Paco. And, and then yeah, yes. Yeah. And then there was this third scene that to try and incorporate exactly what you're talking about. That was very much like the first two scenes were more like a little bit of drama a little bit of um, of comedy. And then the third scene was like this fake scene that was um, Pablo and Ash. And when Kelly sort of, uh, and it's not, it never, you never, it was never in the show, but um, she comes in after watching them kill all these, you know, people. And she doesn't understand that they, they were possessed, you know, because she gets dragged into this. And, and um, I, I'm supposed to start like, oh my God, you just killed all these people, blah, blah, blah. And then Pablo, it, this scene whacked Kelly with a frying pan to knock her out. Um, and then like, you know, Ash had the, you know, button at the end. And so in my audition, in, I wasn't planning on it, but in the moment I just platform, like, how do you, you it, cause that's how the scene ended, but there's no other person doing the scene with you, you know? So mm. I just like, <laughs> just threw myself like, you know, as I got hit, cause I, you know, I hit myself in the face with a frying pan often. Um, and, that's and the, the casting director. Um, the next time she's like, by the way, they love that. Will you just keep doing that? And like, the thing is, is when you're throwing yourself down on a concrete floor and you have no idea what you're doing, it was, I mean, I had some good bruises from it, but I feel like that, that's exactly like how Ray was saying. And then when you go, when you do it, and when we did it with Sam and um, with Bruce, you know, it was more of the same thing. And then they, exactly what Ray said, they, you know, Sam asked me, it's on tape somewhere. Where he's like, are you going to be, if you get this, you know, Kelly is going to be possessed. Are you okay with that? And it was a dream of mine. So I immediately was like, yes. Like I was a little bit too excited. And I think, uh, I think that helped or I don't know. <laughs> I think it has to in this situation. It seems like even just in the audition time, you guys were game to do anything. But in season one in particular, was there any moment where you were kind of standing there on set and thinking to yourself, like, what did I just get myself into? Maybe they're pushing this too far for me. Um, every day. <laughs> Ray and I, every, Ray, I mean, I was just thinking of, because I haven't thought about this in a minute. It's been a while since we've actually, you know, even had to do one of these. And Ray, I was just thinking of like, you know, the, the shotgun scene day and the, your hair on a, a electrocution day with the smoke in your hair. And then oh, I, I was thinking about the connect, the connecting, we had to, uh, there was like oh, this thing, with, let's do it. Let's do this it. hand that came out of like her mouth and like grabs me by the neck. And the only way to do it was without like anything there. So it was just the both of us like looking into going, each other's eyes and going like me getting choked ready? and her mouth open. And, and, and we were going, oh, because <laughs> it had to like grab his face, if you remember. <laughs> so I had like things coming out of my mouth. But it looked great. Then, but then, right, it looked great in the end. But Ray, the way we were actually filming it, right? Do you remember we were like, oh, oh. <laughs> and we're like, what the hell are we doing? I, I mean, I had a day where I had like, um, you know, these, these, uh, the Ruby's babies come out of my mouth um, <laughs> in a dungeon, tie, you know, like all tied up with no face and, you know, uh, so so I didn't really realize that that was just the beginning of like them torturing <laughs> me, but um, but it was fun. Yeah, like I think it was the first time you do it. Like you know, when they, I actually thought they were feeding me, or they had to use real leeches, and I thought um, 
um, the Brujo. I thought they didn't switch out the bowl. And then my, my fake teeth kept popping out. And then there was like always crazy stuff. But I think Ray and I would have these moments, especially if we were shooting stuff separately, where we would come together. And it was just really nice to have somebody that was in the same exact boat that we were like, this is awesome, but let's do our thing. Let's do our thing, right? We have Kelly and Pablo have two expressions that were in every script. And this oh. is what we would go up to oh, each other I mean, and say. I, um, uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. How's it? Oh, I'm blanking right now. It's how's it? How, how's it? Wait, how you holding up? And I'd go, what is happening? Because they would always say that to each other. Conveniently, those, those worked even today in real life. Wow, you holding yeah, up? What is happening? I feel that's like what I texted really her when I how they're realized. holding up. Expect them to say to say that yeah. live back, and it's not going to happen. Wait, Ray, what? That's what I texted Dana a couple weeks ago. Okay. I was like, um, "How you holding up?" And she was, was like, like, "And I go, what is happening?" I should have started the panel that way. <laughs> this is this is a very clearly one of a kind unique show but is there anything you learned during the process of making this that is surprisingly come in handy on the future projects that you guys wound up doing um how to hit your mark no, it's just <laughs> <laughs> um, i mean i think i'm still working yeah. on it <laughs> i mean yeah me too. i feel like yeah um uh, I've learned what, what has come in handy. You know, I feel like um, not hitting other people on when you're doing a, a stunt and, and, and it was came in handy because I I'll tell you all it takes is one time to accidentally hit Lucy Lawless in the face with the broom, and mm. you learn real quick to be like, okay, I'm not going to get that into it when I'm shooting a scene. You really have to like because you know it's easy to like just. You've done all the work and you're like, ah! and um, I will never forget. I almost broke Lucy Flawless's face. I was like, Lucy Flawless. And that's what she is. I wept. I cried. I cried. And she was like, I'm fine, man. <laughs> I'm like, ah. So I feel like that's a good. That's a good I think thing. anyone would have had that reaction to, to almost smacking yeah. her in the face with the room. What yeah. would I say is the set piece that took you the longest to nail? Did any of them make you think, like, I can't believe we're still here filming this right now? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I mean, for me, it was really, I, I still just go back, to, just because it was the first time. And I, it turns out to be one of the greatest scenes. As we, I think that's another thing I've learned, actually, I'll add. The things that are the hardest are always the mm. most rewarding in the end and look the coolest. Um, but... Right, I just keep going back to that shotgun scene because we went back to that. Oh, that was right because there I were, think every, like, you know, yeah. every season there was sort of like that one scene that we had to keep going back to, and it was kind of tough because you would you know move on to another episode, and then they would say, "Hey, we got to go back." And so, um, uh, I, I mean, I was covered in tattoos for a very very long time, and. Um, and uh, I think that the scene where Pablo was cut in half, um, you know, everybody was gone and there would just be days where I was there somehow, some way with like the doubles and the stuntmen. And there I was still in the still in my uh, deathbed waiting to be sliced in half. Um, but again, you know, when it goes away and the job ends. <laughs> You yeah. suddenly just like you go back and you're like, oh, what I would do to hear the knock on the trailer right now when they're coming to get you. <laughs> yes, what? Yes, I'm with you. I'm like, what I wouldn't do to have hypothermia being covered in blood with an industrial fan and and wind and leaves and like getting electrocuted and all the things that I'm breaking a rib and like you, it's it really you do you miss it. But especially with something like this, I feel like you know, that was such an experience and um, it wasn't, you know, a massive cast and, um, you know, I miss our little unit. I miss our little dysfunctional family. And, and I do miss Ray and his, every day there was some, he would do something so funny or like just mm. try it. it like every day it was, he was coming out of his trailer with something new. Every, I mean, every time it was, it was a thing. And then like the dummies or the, um, you know, the shemp, the, 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 the deadite dummies, he would there was it was an entertainment it was a show within a show it's a show that's part of one of the most iconic horror franchises of all time and the benefit of that is it will never go away like you guys mm -hmm. doing these conventions 
forever and ever and ever. And also this show <laughs> is such a hardcore dedicated fan base. So I do have a semi-serious question for you guys now. Mm -hmm. What do you think could have changed the fate of the show? Because it obviously wasn't a quality issue. The show every single season would amaze me with how it, it raised the bar higher and higher and higher. So what do you think it was that needed to change in order to make sure this great material found a bigger audience? Well, that's exactly it. I'm gonna jump right on that. I love the home that we had on Stars, but it was so limited in its viewership. You know, if you didn't want to subscribe to the network, then you know we 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 could have had bigger a bigger audience were we on a platform like even Hulu or Amazon or or Netflix. But because we were on this like cable subscription. It really limited the audience because as the show got onto Netflix, we started to see that people were, you know, still watching like season one through three and like really into it. So it was kind of sad because mm. we did this greatness, um, and it didn't get like what it didn't get the praise that it should have gotten. And and personally, <clears throat> I was really looking forward to to seeing where where things were gonna go uh, with the show, just because we had set up so many relationships it was just all there there to to play with so you know well i say never say never because the way things are going you know i've been reading all these very terrifying things about um you know our industry and and just you know with productions and things are just being shelved and whatnot so i honestly feel like you know never say never there have been you know um, shows where they get they're they're canceled but then they get picked up on a, and by another network so i right. know I know Bruce has said he's in retirement, but I feel like Ray and I could convince him. Don't you, Ray? Yeah, totally. I feel like we could convince him to come back. I think for enough like, time if it has passed like by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just needs yeah, a exactly. good couple of, uh, you know, like one or two years of just like chilling in the woods and not having the boomstick <laughs> yeah. in his hand. And then like he starts to crave it and it'll, it'll, yeah. it'll, it'll come back. You know what I mean? Yeah, you would believe it. I just saw a chat pop up. I believe her name was Cindy, but she had put Shudder in her comment. And that sounds like a great home for something like this, especially oh. with all the, uh, the original productions that Shudder is getting off the ground right now. It's a great mm. place to go stream some horror content if someone out there isn't already subscribed. Do you huh. guys know what would have been in store for your characters if the show did venture into this Mad Max-ish Mad Max -ish world? No, I don't. I mean, there was one day where Rob came out of a meeting and he was like, we were just discussing ideas for season four and your name came up and we were thinking of putting you in a glass jar and it would just be your head. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Um, by the way, I happen to like, like you guys, I love you guys, but nobody told me what was happening on the top of my head. Like, you what know, was when you like see a height of your head, you, you yo, I, so I looked at a photo from like being at like the first comic con or like any of the photos from the entire show, the thing that, that flat top, like. It's like, you know, when you look at your high school photo, your prom photo, and you're like, what was I thinking? Dude, it just, well, it was too much. It was Mark I Simpson. Tell you, I mean, Ray, I sat next to you in a makeup chair. It, that was your 45 minutes in the chair was your hair. <laughs> I, I mean, Ray, like it was, he had, a, it was a band name. And then if one, if one curl was out oh, of place, right. it was yeah, like a yeah, singer. Uh -huh. I mean, and yeah. he, like you were really into it and it worked. I feel like it was. It was I know. Oh, I know. I mean, I, I, and it was great. I just like had a moment where I saw photos and I was like, whoa, like it was really big. And yeah. I remember one day in New Zealand, I was out at a bar and I was in line for the bathroom and, and somebody just turned to me and said, get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, what? Why? And so... So yeah, um, uh, yeah, I'm I'm really bummed that like at the start of the quarantine, I didn't just take the 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 you know take 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 it oh, all like, off. Like Uncle like Bruce Lizzie. did. Bruce Campbell did. Yeah, and, and Bruce. Um, yeah. But yeah, well, at least we now know if there is a season four, that's already a storyline for Pablo. 
He has shaved off his mustache. He has yeah. his hair. <laughs> the luck. By the way, that's like the that's the shorter version. Like you had it. Yeah. It was there were yeah. it was like really. I was I actually was jealous. I want all I wanted was bigger hair. I kept trying to get it like yeah. as big as that. We had we had the hair. That's right. They are both iconic looks, though. Because I feel like that's mm. the important thing with this franchise, too. You've had people for decades dressing up as Ash, and your looks in this show calls for the exact same thing. So you got to embrace that look. Yeah, oh, for totally. sure. Dana, your wardrobe on the show was mm. pitch perfect, too. Did you get to keep anything now that it's all wrapped up? I did, but I found out. Because I will say, Bar I just, Barbara, don't, I miss our wardrobe department. We were so close with those awesome ladies. And so much work goes into all, like, not just our show, but every show. Honestly, I, I wrote a whole article about it um, for iHorror. I um, called it Take, It Takes a Village to Raise a Strong Female Character. And there's so many unsung heroes I just want to, that I'm concerned with now because, like, everybody's out of work, you know. But with um, Barbara, from the start, we were just on the same page. And she was so collaborative about, like, um, Kelly's a rock and roll vibe and she would literally cut the t-shirts on me um, as if because I we had come up with like the Kelly just you know she's she's makes her own she's, she's quick with a with with thinking on her feet and, and turning anything into a weapon well she just cuts her clothes and makes her own stuff so all, all of those purple leather jackets I mean they were custom made people were like die, hand dyeing them and and so much work went into it but here's the funny thing so when we found out we were um, not going to probably be coming back or whatever, um, there was all of those clothes. Because like Ray and I, and especially like, well, Bruce's is easy because he has the same look. So one day I got to see, it was a rack of a hundred blue shirts followed by another rack of a hundred of those tacky pants. But Ray and I got to have our hero outfits. Like he, he was always in some form of green, right, Ray? And um, mm -hmm. I was always in purple. And so... I just, but also I, I'm very, I'm, I'm very nostalgic. So here's what I found out. They auctioned off. Actually, I think it was you, right, who told me when, when the show got canceled, they auctioned off like the stuff that they still had. Yeah. Um, and I met someone at a convention who was doing a Kelly cosplay who she's like, I have your pants. I'm wearing your shirt and I'm wearing a jacket. And I'm like, cause there were multiples, right? Um, no, no. I thought I had the number, like the number one, which is your main, the one that really you just wear. And then there's like, no, no, I have this stunt, Kelly. I have this stunt. I just think it's so funny that people out there have the actual number one. I'm like, that. that's, I just, I laugh about it. It makes me happy. It makes me happy. I'm but it is funny to know me. that that happened. Otherwise, I would own some piece of that show. And I already <laughs> have too many props as it is. Oh, I think it's still out there. I think they're still out there. But look, oh. watch out for knockoffs because there's knockoffs of me, of, of no. Pablo and Kelly stuff everywhere. You got to know sure they, they sign the tag. It. They sign the tag. They'll say our names in the, ta in the tag. You can look it up. You know I'm going to Google this after. Um, a very broad question for you, but an important one to ask for this particular show. What was your absolute favorite set piece, blood gore scene from start to finish? Favorite to, to film or favorite to watch? I will let you go one way okay. or the other with it. Oh, man. It's not an I easy one to answer because there's so many. Okay, I will say, I'll say this. Favorite set that they created, I will just, other than, I mean, the Airstream was phenomenal, but like the set piece was season two when they did the bar like where it was, you know, Lucy mm. and Lee Majors. I just, like the details that were in that, um, I just, it was just like, I mean, we were shooting in, in Michigan. I mean, in New Zealand, and it looked like Michigan. I would say um, the favorite, I mean, I just got to go with the season two opener only because there was so much blood. There were like a thousand mm -hmm. gallons of blood. And you know, Ray, I was looking this up because I'm like, I, I remember I had, you know, I've told the story before. I, I asked how much blood I was getting on me just for ripping the barman's arms off. And it was 26 gallons just on me. But I, rem I forgot about this, right? When it was you, me, and Bruce, like it was a different shoot day, but still in the same thing. doesn't matter. We each had to stand on, they put like a little tarp and they had to individually blast us with the blood cannon. Mm -hmm. And for you and I, 
which we were covered. And that's, we have a photo of like high five, mm -hmm. but we didn't. Cause of course, Perry, as we probably talked about with you, there's never enough blood. They never say, no, that's good. That's enough ever. They're always like more blood, more blood. We're like, there's maybe the white of your eye is not covered. So I, I looked this up, right? You went, they, they did not think we had enough. But, and so they took <laughs> buckets and just dumped them, not over Bruce's, but just yours and my head. Mm -hmm. And like, your his hair did kind of still, it like still. It a little bit, but. <laughs> it was like an ice cream cone that you dip and then like it just went around the yeah. sides. It was a thing of beauty. It was a thing. So that, that was, a, I would just have to say that whole experience um, in that bar scene and all of it, I, I, that's my fave. What about you, Ray? Um, so, so I would say that for me, you know, at the time, I think I always used to vocalize how much I hated this, um, <laughs> like this, this, this part, but like we were in that Delta for like a good portion sure. of the show. And you yeah. know, like never in my life had I worked on a show before where I spent so much time in a car. So now when I watch stuff, I'm always like, mm, that rear projection sucks, number one. Yeah. And number two, <laughs> like they're not moving and they're, there's a lot of scenes in the car, but it was the time of the day where Dana and I and Bruce were trapped in a car. And initially I was always sort of like, I didn't really know what to, to say to Bruce because I had just like met him and whatnot. And you know, Miss Dana, she couldn't stop talking. She just talked, talk, 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 talk. And it just became this moment where I just like felt like I was like really with like my sister and my dad in this car. And for some reason, I just like remembered that so, so much, every scene in the car. So for me, something that was not my favorite at the time, as time has passed on, I'm like, God, that really was, so great because you know we just talked about the most random shit while people were moving you know heaven and hell around us um you know bruce would sing and i would be crying in the corner because i was thinking about tortured pablo and the scene we were about to do and um <laughs> but uh i would say that that car was number one for me and then um i would say for me like the brujo especial episode and that whole thing and all of that uh, was 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 pretty great. You know, I watched, I tried to like cut some scenes out of the show for my reel and it's really hard to find things yeah. that are usable because everything is just ridiculousness. There's not like a nice moment where you're being real with someone. It's just Oh, I madness. think there are, Ray. I think there are nice <laughs> moments with Pablo and Kelly. Sure. You just gotta find them. They're like, yeah, yeah. you know, right? It's, yeah. it's about, a, I'll tell you which one because I had to do this one. They're about 30 seconds right before dead eight mrs johnson comes or right before peppy mm -hmm, comes and mm -hmm. starts you know pouncing so um yeah i love i yeah i think but that delta right it got really bad when you would like remember when you would it would be after lunch and you would burp so loud and i would like it was lit you're right it was like a brother and it, and it, it was it was like a brother and an uncle for me <laughs> it was honestly and he, i would be like ray and he's like what sorry i can't i can't be bloated I, mean, when I'm, I can't be bloated when i'm dead or something you would say it was I, great. I will i will say though the one thing that was part of our show that really most people may not know that i missed the most and in this time i wish i was there is new zealand like i mean I think amen I, I was the one that was like, I don't want to go home. I want to stay here. I want to stay here. Yeah. And I just, I still talk to a lot of the crew and, you know, I just, you know, I just, I miss, miss, miss making this show and, and what we did. And so it's just, uh, yeah. I know, Ray, yeah. this is, I was thinking that we were always there in this, at this time. We were yeah. always there every, cause it changed slightly, but we were always there in April and May and pretty much usually June. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I just, I, I'm, I'm with Ray, like that was like an added bonus that we could go on and on about how amazing that family is over there and how uh, incredible just being there was. But not only that, um, I'm one day away from being an expat and moving there. Cause you know why New Zealand eradicated that. COVID That's what baby. I'm saying. I'm like, <laughs> because it's the best place on earth. So, but don't tell anybody cause I don't want everyone to move there. We just, we'll go there. So let's go there. How about Ray and I? Ray, you and I can go and we'll film the Kelly and Pablo spinoff and we'll do it COVID safe with like our phones and we'll go on Shutter. Look at we're Perry. 
we've got a plan. Happen. And then just sa save some sort of prop for me so I can add it to the collection in the end. I will, Bobby. Perry. I'll give you we'll something. Bring to you. Perry. We're bringing you to set. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going in a heartbeat. It's probably still there, right? You know, Rob Tapper and Lucy Lawless, you know, live there. That's why I bet you it's there. They still have that soundstage with stuff in it. I'm sure. There's I'll a new soundstage in Auckland, guys. Oh my God, it's perfect. I just read it. Um, I just read it. It's the only thing that Rob Tapper tweeted in like the last couple of months. He like tweeted something about a new, new soundstage. That's um, not Rob Tapper. That's his assistant, anyway. <laughs> I asked. Uh, I'm so okay. sad to do this, but we're we're getting the wrap up right. I could talk to you guys. You already know this. I could talk to you for hours about this show. <laughs> like, well, we and Perry, really you are first. I mean, Perry, we have a, I have a very special place in my heart for you, as you know how much I love you. But it was our first interview at a com at New York Comic Con. You it was in that room, and and it was. I remember just like looking around, being like, "What the hell? I don't. What are we doing?" Because we had never. We had. It was anyway. So you and you were so such a good first interview. It was because we were both, I was very nervous, but it was so much fun. So I love that this whole little gang is back together. I am so happy this happened. Hurry up and get back, whether it's virtual or in person, stay on that con circuit. The horror community is very special and that community loves you guys and loves this show. And I can guarantee you, if there ever is an opportunity to bring you guys back for more Evil Dead in the future, that community is going to get super loud and back you up every step of the way. So Ray, Dana, so good to see you. A big thank you for being here today and celebrating the show thank on May Comic Con. I am going to let you guys go and tell everybody out there to stay tuned. We're going to have a word from our sponsors and then we're going to be back with more conversations.